So a couple things. First, I just want to thank everybody for coming out to talk about zero trust in the cloud. And the other, uh, I apologize if my voice uh, breaks up a little bit during the talk. I'm fighting something off, but thankfully it's not COVID. So <clears throat> today I'm going to talk about zero trust in the cloud and how WebAssembly is a key enabling technology for that. Uh, so I wrote a book called Programming WebAssembly with Rust. I uh, wrote Cloud Native Go, um, ASP.NET Core. Uh, my books haven't always been on the right side of history. I wrote a Windows Phone 7 programming book. Um, so I created a, an open source uh, WebAssembly project called Wasm Cloud. Uh, <coughs> I co-founded Cosmonic, which is a company that's built on top of Wasm Cloud for managing WASM Cloud um, distributed applications. Uh, I'm typically the most paranoid person in the room, which I guess uh, goes hand in hand with being concerned about security. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a uh, big WebAssembly fan, but uh, I'm also practical. So while I think WebAssembly solves a ton of really important problems, it doesn't solve them all. <clears throat> yeah, there's my GitHub address. Uh, I've got some other contact links at the end of the slides. This is by far my new favorite quote. Um, uh, Runar uh, Bjarnason, the guy who cr uh, co-created the Unison programming language, uh, posted this and uh, I've been <coughs> stealing it from him ever since. So. I want to go from the lowest level WebAssembly technology, so that's the file itself, the virtual machine, and how that enables security. And then I'm going to take a journey from there to runtimes, and then to uh, above that level to capability security, and then finally we'll talk about some distributed system security. And uh, which parts are enabled by WebAssembly itself, and then which parts are add-ons enabled by open source projects. And uh, if you look at my amazing art skills, you'll see that the green stuff is uh, open source add-ons, and the purple is uh, stuff that's enabled by WebAssembly on its own. So, There it is. Uh, the, you've seen and probably heard in uh, keynotes and some other sessions how buffer overflows, buffer overruns, things like that are uh, pretty easy attack vectors. And one of my favorite qualities of WebAssembly is that they're simply not possible. You physically cannot buffer overrun in a WebAssembly module. Um, you can't write code that uses system calls. You can't write code that branches to a location that wasn't there when the file loaded to begin with. Uh, and in many cases where uh, C and C++ would crash with undefined behavior, uh, WebAssembly modules will uh, do what's called a trap and they will uh, fail to run. And if there's one thing you take away from this session, it would be to click on that YouTube video. Um, it shows a buffer overrun exploit in the original Legend of Zelda game for the Nintendo. Uh, and it's by far one of the most fascinating exploits I've ever seen. So um, if you go and watch that video, then uh, I feel like my work is done here. Um, I'm sorry it's not a shortened URL, but I figured at a security conference nobody's going to click a shortened URL. As I mentioned, uh, the WebAssembly modules have uh, control flow security as well as module security. So um, you can't create arbitrary pointers, uh, you can't dereference memory that's uh, invalid. Um, there's a number of other things that are prevented by the simple fact that you cannot tell 
if a WebAssembly module to jump to an arbitrary location. You can't have it read past the end of a buffer and then treat whatever's beyond that as code. Uh, linear memory and uh, the code being executed on the stack are two entirely different things that you uh, cannot push together. So, let me see if I can. That, that uh, can you see that? Okay. So I've divided this particular sample into two highly scientific categories, worky and no worky. Uh, so the working sample is, uh, this is Rust, in case you're curious. Um, basically this is an add function and the no mangle there tells the Rust compiler to export that function. Um, at the primitive level, WebAssembly can only exchange numbers with the host, and so anything uh, where you need to exchange robust data types, at least uh, today, you have to figure out how to do that on your own. There are some standards coming that will hopefully help make that easier, but um, that's pretty much how it works. So let's see if I can show what this looks like. So these are all the export functions from the WebAssembly module. This is a, it's not actually a WebAssembly language, it's just a textual representation of the bytecode. And so you'll see there's a couple of them that Rust adds for you, but the two that are important are memory, which is the linear memory block shared by the host and the guest, and add, and that function is the one that we, that we created. And <coughs> I don't actually have any tricks up my sleeve, I just uh, I measure my typing speed in typos per minute, so I wanted to make sure I didn't make you suffer through that. So you'll see uh, I just added, I just called the add function with four and four. Um, the uh, WASM time runner uh, reminded me that that particular call interface is not currently stable, so it might break. But I got eight, and uh, so that's, that's all good. So now, let's see what happens if um, I try and create a malicious actor. In here, this is also Rust, but uh, and it's uh, no mangle, so I'm gonna export the add function. But here I'm going to attempt to read a file and write to the console, and then finally just add the number. And Again, I'm just running using WASM time to run it. And you'll see that it trapped. Um, it failed to invoke add, and you'll see, you will see that unreachable thing um, an awful lot. And generally what it means is you've attempted to execute code um, that doesn't exist. So in uh, this particular WebAssembly module, it's not using what's called WASI, so it doesn't have any instructions for accessing the file system. So when the Rust linker created that module, it just placed a bunch of unreachable code, uh, un unreachable macros, uh, where the real code should be. So that's the, the basics of uh, low-level, module-level security. We will show that. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about uh, one level up from the WebAssembly module security is, <coughs> is runtime security. And uh, every WebAssembly module requires a runtime. The regardless of what magic or uh, smoke and mirror shows you've seen, uh, all WebAssembly modules need a runtime. 
So whether that's the browser or uh, Node V8 uh, engine or as you'll see, as you saw, WASM time. So that runtime provides a bunch of security uh, for WebAssembly modules. First is that host memory is off limits. Uh, no matter what you try and do from within a WebAssembly module, you cannot access the host's memory. You're uh, basically given an isolated sandbox playground uh, vector of bytes, and that's it. That's all you can use. Uh, the host has its own memory isolated elsewhere. The host supplies the implementation for imports. You saw that I exported a function called add, but if I needed to import something, like the ability to access a file, it's up to the host to supply the implementation for that. And what that really means is that the host is now has uh, the right of last refusal for all operations that that module needs to, uh, wants to execute. Um, there are <coughs> anti-forgery checks, so depending on the runtime, uh, you'll see uh, a whole bunch of security that prevents the module itself from being tampered with at runtime from outside. And some runtimes will uh, compile the WebAssembly module into machine code when it starts up, and uh, that's also a uh, configurable option up to uh, the host uh, or the runtime. <coughs> so there's another standard uh, within the WebAssembly community called WASI, and it stands for the WebAssembly Systems Interface, and its original design was to close that gap and give WebAssembly modules some access to system resources. Um, there are a lot of blog posts and even documentation that kind of steer you toward the idea that WASI is basically a WebAssembly version of POSIX. That is not the case, and um, thinking that can actually get you into some trouble. Uh, like I said, the uh, WASI modules are allowed to do certain types of I.O., but again, the host gets to refuse or grant access to those. If I want a WebAssembly module that's compiled to WASI to read a file or write a file or do any kind of uh, disk I.O., the runtime itself, uh, the runtime itself needs to uh, pre-approve that file. So when I start a, uh, a WebAssembly runtime, I have to tell it this directory or these files are available to the WebAssembly module. And if I don't tell it that, the WebAssembly module uh, will not be able to access it. So with that, I'm going to take a look at a uh, WASI demo. And again, the categories here are worky and no worky. So we'll take a look at the worky one first. And you'll see that there is a print line statement here. And in a WASM32, on regular WASM32 unknown target, uh, you would be unable to do that. Um, you don't have access to standard out. So, but since I'm going to use WASI, I do have that, act, that ability. And uh, you'll see that the target, uh, the rest target here is WASM32 WASI. Uh, that's crucial. If I had left that as WASM32 unknown, uh, I wouldn't have been able to run this. So here you can see that my WebAssembly module now wrote to standard out and uh, still performed the math. So now let's go to no worky and see what a, a malicious actor might try and do. So here, it looks pretty much the same as the other Rust code, except it's reading from a file called foo.txt. And um, I'm going to print the file's metadata here and then add some more um, you know, highly efficient debug statements right there. 
And again, the run command is the same. It's just executing against a uh, WASI target. So now, again, remember the unreachable that I mentioned before. Uh, it failed to invoke add, and uh, there's also a big panic. And uh, this is the uh, important bit, which is that it failed to find a pre-opened file descriptor through which oo.txt could be open. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but the, web, the WASI API allows for um, descriptors to be accessed and read, read from and written to. And, but they don't have the ability to create their own. So the host has to pre-create a file descriptor uh, in order for the WASI file, the WASI module, to be able to read from that file. So next, above WASI, we're going to switch from the, the, the regular WebAssembly standards to uh, WASM Cloud, uh, the CNCF open source project. And that sits on top of WASM time and provides uh, a number of extra features, uh, the, probably the most important of which is capability security. So I mentioned that for a WASI module, you might get a descriptor and you can read from it and write to it, but you don't really know why you have, no one really knows why you have that descriptor. Um, when you build a regular microservice, a uh, regular application running somewhere without WebAssembly, your security policy might grant that thing access to sockets, but what it really ever does is allow you to declare why uh, it needs that socket. So. The WASM Cloud Runtime lets you uh, sign your WebAssembly modules so that you can declare that one of them needs uh, an HTTP server or a message broker or a data store, and the WASM Cloud Runtime is responsible for uh, vetting that you're allowed to do what you claim you're allowed to do, <coughs> and then uh, actually stitching together the WebAssembly module with the capabilities that it needs. So <clears throat> in this Rust code here, you can see that there is a uh, key value store I've called increment on the key, and I've sent a request on a message topic called security.day. But what's missing there is uh, pretty much everything. So there's no connection strings, there's no secrets, there's no URLs, uh, and um, more importantly, you don't even know which key value store you're talking to, uh, nor do you know which message broker you're talking to. So at runtime, when you are in your uh, inner de developer loop on your laptop, you could use a whole bunch of in-memory things, but when you're in uh, development, you could use one key value store, and then in production, you could use Redis or Cassandra or whatever, and um, you don't have to recompile or redeploy your code. And that is specifically designed to address things like the log4j vulnerability, where in current development models, I have to compile all of my dependencies into my deployment unit. So my logger, the, the choice I've made for how I log, that's built into this thing that I'm deploying, even though you know, it, I might only have four lines of business, business logic in there. And so WASM Cloud is designed to let me strip away all that, write pure business logic, and also be uh, confident that these modules are secure. So <clears throat> here's another example where 
it receives an HTTP request and returns an HTTP response, but nowhere in there does it say what port it's running on or um, even if it's running in under a unit test. So Wasm Cloud embeds uh, JSON web tokens inside the WebAssembly module so that we can uh, verify them in isolation and verify them offline. Uh, one of the big things that I wanted to be able to do was take a look at a WebAssembly module and decide whether I should let it do what it wants to do without having to consult the central authority. Um, you know, if I need to talk to Docker Notary or something else, then what is the, how do I define my security logic for when I can't contact the authority? And uh, so this one, allows me to uh, access that stuff without, potentially without even having network access. So <clears throat> this is all right. So again, I have uh, worky and no worky. If I inspect the claims in This one, you'll see uh, the account, this is the issuer, uh, the module, that's essentially the subject. Um, each one of these WebAssembly modules uh, is issued uh, cryptographically. And you can see that this one is allowed to use the HTTP server and the key value store. And if I were to look at the noworky, You'll see that it has HTTP server, but it doesn't have the key value store capability. So at runtime, the Wasm Cloud host will uh, reject any attempt by this module to access any key value store. And uh, let's see if I can, I can remember exactly how to do this. Sorry, I, uh, it's not raw, it's JWT only, okay. There we go. So you can see uh, when this was issued, uh, which was Monday, January 30th, um, <clears throat> the issuer and the subject. Now these are, uh, these are ED25519 keys. They just have, they've been encoded in a way that makes it so that they're double clickable. And uh, I can tell from the first character uh, the purpose of the key. So the first character here is A, means it's an account key. First character M means it's a module key. And uh, I'm keeping the, in the hash of the module so that I can verify whether it's been tampered with. And here's the list of capabilities that it's allowed to use. So the next thing uh, that I want to talk about is cluster security. So uh, when running everything on a single machine uh, offline, uh, your security risk is much, much smaller than when you're running a big distributed system in production. And uh, Wasm Cloud allows you to form uh, self-healing clusters of uh, Wasm Cloud hosts that are running your modules. And so because these modules are so small, you can tell it to run a module uh, on one host, you can move it from one host to another, you can scale it from one running instance to 100, uh, 
All of that is done through the distributed systems functionality. <clears throat> so in a Wasm Cloud cluster, every host has a key pair, and each host only trusts a certain set of public keys. So for any given Wasm Cloud cluster, uh, the hosts have essentially a trust list of which other hosts uh, they, um, they will allow to communicate with. And so a, an invocation, whether it's an actor calling, whether it's a, a WebAssembly module calling another one, or uh, whether it's a module calling the key value store, those invocations are uh, also signed, and each one of those also contains a JSON web token. And so uh, anytime a Wasm Cloud host receives a request to execute something from a remote entity, it can verify that it came from a well-known host, that it hasn't been tampered with, that the host is one of the ones that's allowed to uh, communicate. And um, you can even add extra policy so that you can verify that certain issuers are allowed to exist or allowed to communicate, but other ones aren't. That comes in pretty handy making when you want to set a policy that'll, that forces you to uh, use different uh, signature identities in dev and prod so you don't accidentally deploy something uh, destined for dev to production. And <clears throat> sorry, I kind of went through a little bit fast on that one, but um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, kind of covered a lot, so um, more than happy to answer questions about Wasm Cloud, security, WebAssembly, and uh, I believe that QR code is for session feedback. Uh, Wasm Cloud can run anywhere you can spawn the host process. So you could run it as a, you can run that host as a, in a, as a JavaScript host inside a browser tab. Um, we have an Elixir OTP host that we use for the cloud backend. There are smaller hosts that um, we're planning on building that are, you know, targeting, you know, like ESP32 devices, things like that. Our host runs on Raspberry Pis. Um, one of my favorite demos is one of my colleagues uh, brings up a Wasm Cloud host on a Raspberry Pi, and you can see it. Uh, we'll see if this actually. Note to self, uh, Wi-Fi is slow and uh, also unreliable. Anyway, um, uh, when he starts the, uh, the host running on the Raspberry Pi, you can see it show up in the network and you can uh, uh, basically treat it like an empty vessel. You can send compute down to that Raspberry Pi so it'll run inside Kubernetes, it'll run inside um, anybody else's cloud, it'll run in a browser tab, uh, basically runs wherever you want to start that runtime. Yeah. Um, so if you, there are a number of uh, performance ones. Uh, if you go to the, the, our website, you'll see uh, some specific measurements, but a, a WebAssembly module that has business logic in it uh, that was built using Rust can be two, three hundred K in size uh, or smaller. And so when you think about like the startup cost 
for a particular piece of compute. You're not starting up a giant Docker image. You're not starting up a, a one gig JVM. So there are some startup advantages. There are scaling advantages. So I can take that one module and run a thousand copies of it across 10 hosts. And now I'm, sp I'm automatically spreading the load across those. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, uh, so the capabilities are embedded inside the file itself. Um, if I were to, I don't have a, uh, a decent tool to, exp to show the, ex the explorer of it, but WASH is the WASM Cloud uh, CLI, and you can use that to get information on what's inside that module. So if I don't want the JWT and I want the user-friendly information, this is what I get, and you'll see that you know, there's, uh, it has all the usual benefits of a JSON web token like uh, valid before date and expiration and so on. And uh, WASH will do it. Yeah, um, if you're using one of our templates to build one of these modules, you can just type wash build and it automatically signs it with the information in the TOML file that's there. I think I saw one other hand. Yeah. Um, so it is, um, in general, we, we tend to prefer the let it crash uh, methodology. So if that actor tries to do something that traps, uh, when it hits that trap, we're just going to dispose of the actor and then bring another, uh, another one back. Uh, because they're so tiny and they're already sitting, the bytes are already sitting in memory, it, it costs us, you know, a few microseconds to bring it back after death. Um, and then uh, an attempt to use a capability that it's not allowed to use, that doesn't actually crash the actor. We just reject the call and log the error message. Any more questions? All right, thanks very much.